Right now is the best time of the year to catch fall stripers on the Chesapeake Bay. Let me tell you how I do it. All right, so to understand where to fish for fall stripers, you have to understand that stripers, first of all, migrate. Rockfish move up and down the bay throughout the year, up and down the river and stuff like that. And fall is the time that they really start looking as that water cools down, they start looking for warmer water. They're actually following the bait out of the rivers too. So by far the best places to look this time of year in the fall is at the mouth of rivers. So starting at the you know northern part of the bay i feel like that migration starts a little bit earlier and they'll start coming out of the mouth of the rivers then and eventually as it starts getting cooler and cooler and cooler more and fish more and more fish are going further down the bay out into deeper waters and you can really start finding those fish schooling up and feeding to get ready for that long winter kind of not hibernation, but slumber in that deeper water. And so what you're looking for then around your local area is you're looking for mouths of rivers and ambush points, basically points and other areas around that river that you can find feeding striper. For me, what I'm looking for when I'm finding feeding striper is, so I'm looking for birds and bait. And you know, if you see bait or birds on the surface, a lot of the times people think it's going to be a guarantee. You know, it's not. Sometimes they're the smaller baits with the rain minnows instead of the bigger bait, menhaden, or sometimes they're smaller birds and terns instead of the bigger birds, gulls. And you kind of got to weed through and get a feel for what the right look for your area is. I would say one of the biggest things is when you're learning your river and you're learning, you know, your area and your specific spot, you really want to look at historically what's happened talk to other fishermen talk to other anglers you don't have to ask for specific spots but ask for a pattern that they're seeing out there and you can kind of gain um, enough institutional knowledge to really figure out how best to target them so look for those birds look for the bait but also your sonar really start to learn how to use your sonar and there's so many great resources out there on how to do it whether it's the sonar kings or different facebook pages that you can really learn what you're looking at but one of the best ways is set up over a school of fish that you found and really pay attention to what the sonar marks look like. So if you get lucky enough and you're on breaking fish, I know it gets so exciting to be out there and casting and catching fish, but take five minutes just to watch your sonar and see what it looks like to be on top of those fish, how they mark on your sonar, what color they are, and then what size those fish are. And you can start really understanding what your sonar is telling you and start to really trust it when you're looking for fish when you don't have birds. Now, as that fall goes on for me, I've noticed the fish keep pulling further south. And lucky for me, they start coming down to my area along along with a lot of other fishermen too, I live right on the mouth of the Potomac or right near the mouth of the Potomac. And I think the fall time, and it's no secret, is one of the best times to fish the mouth of the Potomac. Now it can be the most crowded time of the year down here. Normally I see maybe one or two other boats fishing out here with me, but in the fall time and into the early winter time, I see sometimes 30, 40, 50 boats all around the mouth of the Potomac fishing different areas. And one thing I want to say, if you are planning on coming down here, and a lot of people forget this, it's big water down here. It's not like the northern part of the bay, you know, around Annapolis or West River or South River, where you get a little more protection from the land on the eastern shore, western shore, and the different rivers. You know, there's some areas of the Potomac, especially at the mouth, where the wind can really kick up, a whole lot of current can come out, and it can get big, 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 and nasty quick. And with combine that with cold water, it's not a place to be if you're not really sure of what you're doing out there. So now you made it down to Point Lookout, you know, you followed this migration down, you found the fish at the mouth of your river, you know, and you really put that plan to place, and now you're coming down to one of the biggest rivers on the Chesapeake Bay, um, the Potomac River, and you're gonna fish it the same way. You're looking at the mouth of that river, and you realize, holy crap, it's a huge river, where do I start? So let me give you three tips that are going to help you if you're coming down to Southern Maryland and you're fishing this Point Lookout area. Three things that I always do every single time I go out to fish for stripers in the fall slash winter time. Honestly, the biggest thing is, and a lot of people preach this, you know, I've heard Sean Kimbrough and, and all the famous Chesapeake Bay English talk about this a bunch, is you got to leave the crowds. But that's so much easier said than done. And sometimes, honestly... I'll go to the crowds just to get that confidence and understand what they're fishing on so then I can get a good idea of what the fish are doing and move away after that. But they're right. You need to leave the crowds not because they're not maybe on good fish, but because the fish will spook pretty easily around all that boat traffic, around all that noise. And so if you can find fish outside of those crowds and find fish away from it, it can be a lot easier for you to catch quality fish and even catch quantity of fish as well.
All right, my number two tip is the best times to fish. So for me, an outgoing tide in the afternoon is my absolute favorite time to fish the lower Potomac River and that area out there in Southern Maryland. I think it provides the most fishing opportunities in the most areas and I've caught my biggest fish during those kind of tides. My number two favorite time would definitely be any outgoing tide. So anytime there's an outgoing tide, that's when I tried to time up my fishing because I think it makes a big difference having that water, that warmer water flush out of the river and all that bait flush out of the river for those stripers to, to attack. And then of course my third favorite time is the afternoon. So if you can't get out there during an afternoon or so if you can't get out there during an outgoing tide, or maybe you can only get out there in the afternoon or only at one time of the day, I still think the afternoon is the best because a lot of times that water has had a chance to warm up and the fish just seem more active too. My third and final tip, when you come down here to fish, and I think a lot of light tackle or anglers can have this problem, um, you know, is to be patient. So many people run by so many great spots or just um, go past so many great spots because they're in the rush to go to the next spot. So when you're out there in this big water, I know it can feel like I need to chase the next bite. I need to find the next one. I need to run as far as I possibly can. And you can hit home runs when you're doing that. And you can find a bunch of fish when you're doing that. But my key when I'm down here as someone who fishes this area regularly is to be patient. I'm confident in the areas that I've found um, you know, fish in years past. And so what I'll normally do is I'll sit and I'll wait and I'll listen. Now that doesn't mean I'm sitting in one spot. I'm running around, checking out bird, show, bird shows that are out there, looking at different conditions, watching the tide, and just keeping myself in the general area that I wanna be. So when birds do pop up or when fish do pop up, I'm able to be there instead of being you know, 20, 30 miles away, chasing some sort of radio chatter that you know, is non-productive and so last, I know I said there's three tips about fishing down here, but here is my bonus tip. My number four bonus tip is definitely going to be the type of bird shows you want aren't those gigantic ones. I know that goes against what a lot of people think. The bigger the bird show, the better it is. But down here, for whatever reason, when we get huge bird shows, sometimes we get lucky and there's big fish underneath them. But I'm looking for small bird shows with big birds. So if I see four or five birds going down on the water and they're bigger gulls or even gannets, which are even better... I am going as fast as I can over to that spot, cutting my motors, drifting into it, and drifting on it for as long as possible. A lot of the times, that's where I catch my most quality fish are on those smaller bird shows. Now, if I can have that smaller bird show on like a drop-off or some sort of channel edge, that makes it even better. All right, so hopefully this information was helpful and will make you prepared for this upcoming great bite in the fall Chesapeake Bay striper fishery. Make sure you leave a comment below. Tell me where you like to fish and how you like to fish. All right, hope to see you on the next video. Make sure you click the subscribe button, click the like button, and click the bell so you're notified every single time we put out content. See you on the next video. Mm -hmm.